Well, we thank the choir for that wonderful special, and, and we're so glad that you're here this morning. We want you to take your Bibles and be turning uh, in your Bibles to Joshua, Joshua chapter 24. We're going to be looking at several verses of Scripture, but for our main text, we're just going to read two verses of Scripture this morning. We pray that the Lord would give us a crumb from His Scriptures as we hunger and thirst for His Word this morning. But Joshua chapter 24, we want to read verses 14 and 15 as we're continuing our series, Great Declarations of Faith. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May God add a blessing to the reading of His Word, and may we have ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart that's receptive to His Word this morning. This is our fourth in the series uh, of six messages that we're preaching entitled Great Declarations of Faith. And as you remember, the Bible is filled with many of these declarations, and our first one was John the Baptist when he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world, and that's a declaration of sinfulness. And then we looked at Peter when he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's a declaration of sincerity. And last week we looked at Job when he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. That's a declaration of security. And this morning we're looking at Joshua where he says, uh, we will serve the Lord. And this is a declaration of service. And I think it's fitting that we're preaching this message on Veterans Day, a day when we honor those who have served. And we want to talk about service this morning as we're preaching about service. You know, any time that a message is preached on service, people typically will turn a deaf ear. Uh, they don't want to hear about serving someone else. Uh, we want people to serve us. Serving someone else is, is not something that comes naturally to us. And allowing someone to be in control of our life is difficult. Allowing Christ saying we're going to serve Him and Him be Lord and Master of our life sometimes is hard for us to do. And we wrestle with that. And, but we want to be in charge and, and we want someone else to serve us. We want someone to serve our food, don't we? At the restaurant, we, uh, we love it when someone serves us, but what about when we go home and we sit down and what's for dinner? We want someone else to serve us. So we want someone to clean our houses and launder our clothes. We want someone to detail our cars and wash and wax it. We want someone to fix our cars uh, as a mechanic. You know, in our day, just as in the days of the Old and the New Testament, people are called to make a choice of who they will serve. Life is all about choices. Life is all about relationships. And the choices and the relationships that we have both have e earthly and eternal consequences. And Joshua makes a great declaration of faith about who he is going to serve. And uh, just as we are called to make the same decision, we're called to make a choice of who that we're going to serve in our life. I want you to notice seven points. Uh, there's quite a few in the outline, but we want to go through them very quickly. The, the outline is just a guide to walk us through these scriptures, and I like to outline things in a way that makes it simple for me to understand, and hopefully it will be for you also. But the first point we want to make is the call to service. The call to service. Verse 14, he says, Fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And then he says, Serve ye the Lord. In this chapter of chapter 24, we're coming to the end of Joshua's life and, and we see that Joshua had gathered all the people together and he reminded them of all the things that God had done for them in days gone by. Can, can you think of all the things that God has done for you? in your own personal walk with Him and in your life and all, how He's blessed you and how He's brought you to this point uh, of today. But Joshua had experienced both the good and the bad in his life. He had served under Moses. You remember Joshua and Caleb were part of the 12 tri uh, spies that went over to look at the land. And they came back with a favorable report. And they said, oh, we can take it. We can do this. But the others said, no, we can't. And the other people listened to the ten instead of Joshua and Caleb, and they had to wander in the wilderness for all those years. So Joshua and Caleb had experienced the bad of wandering in the wilderness, but they had seen God was faithful. They still trusted in Him, even though the people resisted. But they wandered in the wilderness. But then eventually Moses died, and Joshua was elevated to the one in charge after Moses died, and he led the people, and he's coming to the end of his life. 
He had led the people into the promised land and they had experienced the good that God had given to them there in the promised land. But now he's about to, to, to die and he, he's calling on to the people to serve the Lord after he is gone. Be faithful. In Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 the Bible says, And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord, to walk in all his ways, to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. As we talk about service, we're talking about a decision to follow someone or something. And we're following Jesus. It's a commitment that causes us to show devotion to Him, to show our love for Him, for what He has done for us. You know, when it comes to serving the Lord, service is never forced upon anyone. And that's why Joshua assembled the people and told them, Choose you this day. Serve the Lord. You know, it's a choice. I read the Scriptures, and in in my study of the Word of God, I never read of anyone who was forced to serve the Lord. No one has ever been forced to serve the Lord. But we find uh, over in Mark chapter 1, and I want to turn there, but in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, we see Jesus made a call to some individuals. It says, Now as He walked by the Sea of Galilee, He saw Simon and Andrew, His brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you fishers of men, make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. We find that Jesus made a similar call uh, to these four men, uh, individuals that he called, as Joshua had made to the whole assembly. And I want you to see four things about the call of service. First of all, it is a spoken call. It is a spoken call. Just as Joshua stood and spoke to the crowd, Jesus spoke to Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And, and, And Jesus still speaks to us today as individuals. He comes and he calls us as an individual. You can't count on mother or grandmother or dad or someone else and their salvation or their service. The call is individual to each one of us. And Jesus spoke and, and they followed Him. The four fishermen responded. Have you responded to the call of Jesus? Uh, ordinarily, a would-be disciple would, would, uh, would so- seek out a, a rabbi. And he would ask that rabbi, uh, can I follow you? Can I be your disciple? And after being accepted by the master, uh, they would literally follow in the master's footsteps. You know, Paul talked about following Gamaliel. And he had basically lived with him from the time he was young. And and he had learned from him and he would followed him as a rabbi. But we see it as a spoken call. But next, it is a simple call. Jesus just had two words. Follow me. Follow me. Joshua just said, serve the Lord. It's a simple, very simple call. And we find that when Jesus said, follow me, they left their nets and they followed Him. They did not wait for a miracle. They did not wait for a program. They just simply followed Him. And and what about us? You know, so often we wait. We're waiting for a miracle. We're waiting for a sign. We're waiting for everything to line up before we'll follow Him. And He says, step out in obedience and I'll take care of all the rest. Joshua gave a very simple call when he said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But thirdly, it is also a specific call. A specific call. A call was a summons to a way of life. Follow God. Follow Christ. It's a summons to a way of life. This is going to become your way of life. He told the men, you're going to become fishers of men. You're going to follow me and become fishers of men. They would draw people with the net of the gospel out of the sea of sin. Joshua made a specific call to the people. He said, you either serve the gods of this world or you serve the one true God, the Lord God, Jehovah. But lastly, we see it as a sacrificing call. It is a sacrificing call. Jesus came into the midst of these these men into their everyday life. They they were not in church, but they were at work. And, And Jesus came to call them and say, even though you're doing this in your life, I want you to follow me. I have something better for you. Moses was out there tending the flock. In Exodus chapter 3, he was tending the flock when Christ came in that burning bush and and God came to him and spoke to him. Amos, in Amos chapter 7 verse 15, it says Amos was following the flock. He was a shepherd, a shepherd, and, and so he was following the flock. Jesus always found people where they were. He found people in ordinary places and at ordinary times. 
Jesus still finds people in the ordinary circumstances of our lives. And He calls us. The call of Jesus shows how much that He cares for us. He came to call the world to redemption. And He needs men and women to help Him reach and preach the gospel. He needs us. And so He calls us to serve Him. In Jesus' day, fishing was very important. But I will conclude to you that the souls of men, women, boys, and girls are of greater importance. So we need to follow Him. And Joshua says, you know, you can follow all the gods of this world and you can follow them, but it's more important that you follow Lord God Jehovah. Joshua said to serve in simplicity. He said to follow and serve in simplicity. And if you remember uh, the woman at the well, Jesus said we worship in spirit and in truth. Simplicity and spiritual. And so we, we serve sincerely and we serve simply just as we find Jesus told the woman at the well. And the question I asked, have you heard the call of Jesus? Have you heard that call to follow Him? Have you heard that call to serve Him in your life? Well, the second thing that we see is in verses 14 and 15, we see the candidates to serve. In verse 14, we've already read that. In verse 15, He says, If it's evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served and were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We find here that there's a couple of things that are mentioned here about the candidates. The candidates to serve. First of all, they are described. We see the described candidates. You know, every four years we elect a, a president and a vice president. And, and there will be two candidates that it's been narrowed, the field is narrowed down to these two. And you choose from those. And, and just here recently, we had the voting this week, and, and we voted for candidates that were on there. And I, I think for a governor, or for the, one of the things, there was 28 people that were on there. Uh, I think it was for governor. There was 28 names that were on there. And, and you know, some people will add just anybody, and, and uh, you might see your name on there one day if somebody thinks you should serve. But, but anyway, there were that many candidates, but typically there's only two. There's really a choice of one or the other. And, and, you know, that's what Joshua was saying. There's two choices to choose from. The candidates to serve are described here in our text, and they are the same ones that you and I must choose in our daily life. He said you can serve Jehovah God, or you can serve the idol gods, the gods that your fathers served before. They had learned about those gods in Egypt when they were slaves. They had seen those gods, and they even built a golden calf, you remember, when Moses was up on the mountain. Went back and reverted back to that. When they were traveling around in the wilderness, they would come in contact with other people and hear about those other idol gods and kind of wonder about them. With, with the, the, we're here in the wilderness. We don't have anything. God's, God's left us to wonder. Maybe we should serve the sun god or the moon god. And, and it, was, it was not the wise choice. But you can serve Jehovah God or you can serve the idol gods of this world. And then we see they're not only described, but they're divisive candidates. They're divisive. You know, whenever it comes to politics, you've got your candidate and then there's the other one. And when you talk to somebody about it, it's usually divisive because they don't see your point. You don't see their point. And, and there's, there's a divisiveness there. But let's forget about the candidates and let's just look at who we need to serve. God or the gods of this world. But it's divisive. The example that Joseph gives is the gods which your father served, the golden calf. They had learned about that, the gods of the Amorites in whose nation that they would wandered through. They had, they had seen these. They had secretly worshipped these gods and, and they were, were criticized and chastised. They were, they were reprimanded for building that golden calf. And God says, this is not right. You need to serve me. But Joshua was trying to show how easy it is to follow the crowd. Oh, everybody's following this God, or they're following this way, this direction, so we want to follow them too. And it's so easy to, to, to get trapped into that and follow. I think the, the nation of Israel, they had seen the Amorite gods, and they had, they had heard about them, and they, they, they had come out of Egypt, and they saw how they worshipped all these different gods. And when they came to a point in their life, uh, God just wasn't moving fast enough. They said, well, it's, it's better. We'll, we'll make a golden calf and start serving these other gods. So people will do that today. But you know, even Jesus had to make the same choice. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, he was tempted by Satan. And we find he had to make the choice because Satan will offer power. He will offer prestige and popularity and pleasure. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, 
but is of the world. And so we find that there's two choices. There's the godly way or there's the ungodly way. And that's what you find in, the, in Genesis. The whole book of Genesis is about two choices that you can make. There's the God-fears and the God-rejectors. And the lineage goes all the way down and it goes through that entire book. But Jesus says there are two choices, and you must make one of those. You must make one your choice. Jesus asked us to deny ourselves, to mortify the flesh, take up the cross and follow Him. And, and some people say that's unreasonable. But let me say this, the rewards are greater than anything the world has to offer you. The rewards are greater. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, Jesus said, For what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So we find there's the, the call to serve and there's the candidates to serve. But thirdly, there is the consideration to serve. The consideration to serve in verses 16 through 20. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, He is it that brought us up out and our fathers out of the land of Egypt. For the house, from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord uh, drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelled in the land. Therefore we will also serve the Lord, for He is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then He will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that He hath done you good. What we, what we find here is that the people were giving lip service to Joshua's message. Oh yeah, we'll, do, we'll serve, we'll do this. I see this time and time again in church. People will make come forward or they'll say they're going to serve. Oh, yes, I'll do that. I, I've loved the Lord and, and He's done, been so good to me. I'll serve Him. And they come for a few Sundays and then they never see Him for a while. Or they take a position and they, they just half, half, halfway do it or, or they're here or they're there. They're, they're never there and de dependable. And so they give lip service saying that they truly love the Lord but their actions don't show it. Joshua says, how can you serve? How does you say you're going to serve when you've turned your back on Him before? When you've, you've not been uh, true to Him and He's been so good to you? You've, you've, you've went this way and you've went that way. You've basically straddled the fence. They were trying to straddle the fence. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Joshua was trying to get the people to make a, a life-changing decision. And in order to make that life-changing decision, you have to consider the facts. You, you need to have all the facts in order to make that decision. We find here as, as concerning their consideration, first of all, it was a historical consideration. He told them, he said, think of all the ways that God has blessed you. He recounted all that God had done for these people. And they agree, God has done all these things. He's led us through. He's, he's took away all the enemies from us as we came in. And, and we, the, the, the Jericho fell and all the cities fell. Did all this when they went over into the promised land. He's blessed us. He's given us all these blessings. He says, you need to consider what He has done for you. And you need to be more sincere in saying that you're going to serve Him. You know, think about it. You need to consider things. If you go to the bank today and you're going to get a bank loan, and they're just not going to give you the money. You can't just walk in there and say, hey, I'm a good person, I need the money. They're going to make you fill out something. They're going to look at your credit history. They're going to, to look at the history of you. Are you a good candidate for us to give money to? So you, you, you ha they have to have all these facts. Now, if you're going to get a job, you don't just walk down to a company and say, I'm a hard worker and I'll do, you, I'll do a good job for you, and they're going to hire you on the spot. They, you give them a resume. They look at your history. Uh, they call references. They look at some things about your past work history, and then they make a decision. And so Jesus wants a disciple to know all the facts, to count the cost to follow Him. If you turn to Luke chapter 14, we find that Jesus was, was giving a parable here. He was talking about people that need to count the cost. And so in Luke chapter 14, uh, we, re we read verses 28 through 33. And we find these words. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whither he have sufficient to finish it? 
lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus is saying we need to count the cost. When it comes to uh, serving him, we need to look at all the facts and count the cost uh, so that we can be faithful to him. Are you willing to make the necessary sacrifices uh, to be a follower of Jesus? So there's a historical consideration, but I want you to notice there's an honest consideration. In verse 19, And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God, He is a jealous God, He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. He just laid it out there very honest. He said, You cannot serve the God, say you're going to serve the God, but then in your heart, truly not do that. Your heart's still far away from Me. You're still thinking of the things in the world and what you can hold on to instead of giving it all to Jesus. He said, you just can't do that. God's a jealous God. God will not reward you. He will not bless you. In fact, uh, it even says here that God is a jealous God and He will not forgive you. He will not bless you. Basically, again, you cannot straddle a fence. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You just can't do it. You have to make a choice from one side or the other. Joshua was saying, you can't serve saying, I'll serve with the intention of holding on to something or holding back from God of giving Him everything. You must be sincere in what you're saying. In verse 15, he said, if it seems evil to you. Now what does that mean? The word evil there means unreasonable. Joshua was saying, if it's unreasonable for you to serve the Lord, then go serve the other gods. But I say that when you look at all the facts, it's not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable to serve Him. You know, the Bible says over in Luke that there were some people that also made some excuses because they felt like it was unreasonable to follow the Lord. And in Luke chapter 9, I want to read Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. These men made excuses, the same excuses that many people make today. But he, the Bible says, And it came to pass that as they went their way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of heaven. You know, as, as I see that, uh, he's telling us you, you, you need to weigh the evidence. You can't make excuses. You can't straddle the fence. I, I love that verse of Scripture there. And every time I read that, uh, it reminds me of my father uh, when he surrendered to preach when I was in the fifth grade. And, and, and he, was, he was no different after he surrendered to preach than he was before. So I didn't know anything different about being a Christian or serving the Lord, following a spiritual leader in the home. He, he was no different. But he began to pastor churches. And, and what I see is he, he, he took small churches and, and he pastored them. He continued to work and he served faithfully all those years and still serves faithfully today And when he's called upon to preach and, and he, he's asked to go. But he put his hand to the plow and he didn't look back. He looked forward. He said, I'm going to serve you. And he's been faithful through the years. And that's what Joshua was trying to tell us that we need to do. We can't be making excuses. We can't think it's unreasonable to follow the Lord because when I weigh the evidence, it's not unreasonable to follow Him. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't put anything on us. that He, he doesn't supply us the, uh, what we need to, to make it through the walk with Him, to follow Him, to serve Him. He gives us all that we need. So you need to make that choice. But then the fourth thing we see is the choice to serve. In verses 21 and 22, And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you, the Lord, to serve Him. And they said, We are witnesses. You see, a choice can only be made after the conviction of the Holy Spirit and a reasonable contemplation. They had considered and weighed the evidence. And they had seen the two choices and they would made that decision. But I also believe the Holy Spirit is involved here. 
Uh, they had said that they would serve the Lord no matter what. And you and I make that same choice. I believe that after we hear the Word of God and we hear the presentation and we hear the teaching and we see the evidence in the Bible, that then the Holy Spirit convicts us and we say, yes, we're going to serve. Uh, they said they would follow with their lips, but Jesus said, I don't just want your lips, I want your life. I want you to serve me with your lives. You know, in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, we read the story about Elijah there on Mount Carmel. And he came unto all the people and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow Him. It's just very simply, that's, that's as simple as it can be put. Either serve God or serve Baal. Either serve God or serve the devil. It's your choice and I'm not forcing you, but you have that choice to make. In Matthew chapter 7, in verses 13 and 14, Jesus said, He talked about the two gates and the two ways. He, he talks about there's two rows, there's two foundations. Life is all about choices. There comes a point in every person's life where a decision has to be made. And you know what we call that? A crossroads. We come to a crossroads. What will we do? Well, we see in this crossroads, in the choice to serve, we see three things. First of all, it's a personal choice. Joshua is standing up and saying, As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. What about you? Will you serve the Lord? Each of us has to make the choice to serve the Lord. But it's not only personal, it's a positive choice. Joshua said, As for me and my house. I want you to get that emphasis there. His choice would have a positive impact on his family. His children would follow His choice. You know, parents, your children are following your lead. You may not think they are, but they're following your example. They're following your leadership. His choice would have a positive impact upon His children and His family, His servants, even His nation. Our choices have an impact on others around us. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, the Bible says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed shall live. It's a choice of life. Are we going to choose to follow God, which is life, or are we going to choose to follow Satan, which is death? But thirdly, we see it's a public choice. Notice he stood up before the people and he told everyone where he stood. He told everyone where he stood. Moses made a similar choice. He, could, he was the second in command. He was Pharaoh's son. And, and he could have had all the riches of the world, but he chose to side with the people of God. Now, he went about it the wrong way. He tried to kill the, the, servant, uh, the, the slave master who was kill, you know, being hard on the, the, the slave, and he killed him, and then he, he, he buried him and tried to, to not talk to anybody. And so he ran off, but Moses stood up with the people of God. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, the Bible says, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. As Joshua made his choice, he spoke of the goodness of God. He said, God has been so good to me that I can't help but stand up and praise Him. Stand up and be counted for Him. The goodness of God should lead us to repentance. It should lead us to a life of service. What has God done for you? As you look at your own life, you, you surely have to say, God has been so good to me that I should be able to serve Him. But the fifth thing we see is the courage to, to serve. In verse 23, Now therefore put away, said He, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. You know, it takes a lot of courage to make a decision and then stand for it. Joshua said, when you stand up and say you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to have to put away the, the gods of the world. You're going to have to throw away those things. You're going to have to give those things up. Are you willing to do that? It takes a lot of courage for a man or a woman to stand up for God and say, Yes, I'll serve you. Yes, I'll stand up and be counted. But Joshua decided even before the others that he and his household would serve the Lord. And Joshua is giving an example to the spiritual leaders in our church and in our country. Spiritual leaders. I look at the men as, as the spiritual leaders in homes, but I understand that some homes uh, may have a woman that's, that's, that's the spiritual leader. And I understand that as a, it may be a single home. But whoever the spiritual leader is in the home, you need to take a stand. What about it? Does your family know where you stand on the things of God? Do they know that on Sunday morning we're going to church? Do they know on Sunday night or Wednesday nights or whenever there's other services that we're going to be there? We're going to be about the things of God. Do they know that you love the Lord? 
And you may say, well, my children are young. They don't understand it. They are watching and they learn more in the first three or four years than they do the rest of their life. The things that they learn about God are learned many times in the first three or four years of their life. They learn those things from their parents and parents that are teachers. So we need to be spiritual leaders. Your family needs to know where you stand about the things of God. And Joshua made a public declaration to serve and choose God no matter what the cost. There are many others in the Word of God who have made that same choice to stand alone. I think of Moses and Joshua, Elijah and David, Gideon and Daniel, John the Baptist and Paul, just to name a few. But I want to think about Daniel. Daniel gives us a great example of the courage to serve. First of all, it takes a daily courage to serve. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, there was a decree that had been made. And it said that you could not pray except to the king. But we find that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself and that he would still pray to Jehovah. And he, he would go into his, his, his room and he would kneel down and he would open the doors, the, the windows that they could still see him and hear him. He didn't care. But it was a trap. They wanted the king to arrest Daniel because he was a threat to them, they thought. He was, he was making them look bad uh, as far as their walk with the Lord. But every morning he went in and prayed. And every morning you and I must make a conscious choice, a courageous choice to follow the Lord. It takes courage. It takes courage in that workplace where uh, it's just not a godly environment. It takes courage to go in every there in the school system where others don't serve the Lord and laugh at you when you do. It takes courage. We need to be bold. We have to make a, a choice each and every day. But it also takes a devoted courage. Yes, it's a, it, it's a daily courage, but it's devoted. No matter what the cost, we read about Daniel, he decided to remain true to God. He purposed in his heart. He said, I'm going to serve you, Lord. I, I don't know what all is going to happen. Well, we know what happened. He was put into the, the lion's den. But what happened? God took care of him and protected him in that lion's den. And Joshua declared that he would serve the Lord even when others turn to the idol gods, either, even when others just give him lip service, even when he would be ridiculed, even when he would be rejected. He said, I'm going to serve the Lord. Joshua's influence and his example affected the entire congregation because we see others followed him in that sincere uh, decision. Have you ever thought about your life and the things that you do, how it impacts others? What an impact that one person can have on their church. You know, you may be the person here this morning and, and you need to make a decision for the Lord. It may be to join the church. It may be to get saved. Others are just waiting for you to make that de decision and then the Holy Spirit's going to open up the floodgates. I read a story about a church where uh, they, they had been witnessing and, and people had been coming, but this one young boy, 18 years old, finally he, he needed to be saved, but he wouldn't come forward. He finally went forward one day and surrendered and, and got saved, and there was about 10 others in the church that, that, that needed to be saved, and they all got saved the same day. And God works in mysterious ways, but he may take one decision that you impact uh, others. You may impact your community. One person can impact and change a community and even a country. One person can have a great impact on their country. Uh, the, the sixth thing we see is the confession to serve in verse 24. And, and the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and His voice will we obey. We cannot be silent when it comes to making a choice for the Lord. If we know the Lord, we must choose to be His disciple. We cannot be silent. We must stand up. In Josh, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, the Bible says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more of his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I was weary for forbearing, and I could not stay. He cannot remain silent. We find here as we look at the confession, two things about the confession. First of all, it's an individual confession. We can stand and corporately say we will serve the Lord. But at some point, you must stand up as an individual on your own and say, I'm going to serve the Lord. You know, it's so easy to stand in a group of people, isn't it? It's so easy to stand up when everybody else is standing up. But what about on Monday morning when it's just you against the world? Uh, we have to make that decision. It's an individual thing. At some point, we have to stand up, confess Jesus, and say, I'm going to stand for you. In verse 24, they said, we will serve and we will obey His voice. Are you obeying His voice? Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 27, And my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We hear His voice, and we follow Him. So we see it's an in individual confession, but secondly, it's identifying confession. 
an identifying confession. Joshua was identifying who he was going to serve. He was identifying that he is on the Lord's side. Which side are you on? Jesus said we must confess him before men or he won't confess us before the Heavenly Father. In Matthew 10, verse 32, the Bible says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. You know, when I was in school, um, they gave out an award one time, most school spirit. Uh, you know, I tried to rally the troops sometimes, and I showed school spirit for our sports and our events, and I, 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 you know, I, I do that for whatever team I support. But I identified with my team. Do you identify with Team Jesus? Are you on His team? We, we can all identify with our team, and we wear the colors, and we rah-rah when they win, and, and we get discouraged when they lose. Well, you can do that with your teams and society, but why can't you stand up for Jesus? Can you stand up for Him and identify with Jesus? We're called to do that. The last thing I want you to notice this morning is the covenant to serve in verse 25. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. And he wrote these words in the book of the law and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart every man to his inheritance. The covenant. They made a covenant that day with the people and with God. You know, we don't hear a lot about covenants today. We read about it in the Bible. God has made the, uh, the Abrahamic and the, the Davidic covenant. We read about the covenants that He made with people. And some people will say that marriage is a co covenant, but uh, it's really a commitment, uh, and it's not so much a covenant, but it still is binding and as serious as a covenant. And so we find uh, there's something, something said here that's serious. This is serious business that Joshua was telling the people. Uh, we see two things about this, uh, this covenant. First of all, it was a witness covenant. It was witnessed so that they could see it. He made a covenant. He set a statue so that the people could see it. And when they would see that statue, when they see, they would walk by that oak tree and they would see the sanctuary, then they would see that, hey, I made a covenant with God here. I need to remember to honor that. And he said, you'll be witnesses about it. Joshua said there in verse 22 that they would be witnesses of the covenant that they were making between God and others. You know, if we make a vow... Our conscience will remind us if we don't follow through. The Bible says over in Psalms that it's better not to make a covenant or a vow uh, than to make one and not, not keep it. Uh, so you need to be serious when you're doing this. You know, I believe there are a lot of unhappy Christians in the society today because they have vowed to serve God and they're not following through. They have vowed to serve God. And, and, and you know, the most miserable person is a person that's out of the will of God, not the lost sinner because they're doing exactly uh, what they, their nature is, to sin. But when you're a saved child of God and you're not in fellowship with Him and you're not obedient to Him, he, He's convicting you. And, 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 and we find that, that you've made a covenant with Him to serve Him, to follow Him. The Holy Spirit will keep convicting you if you're not doing those things. But the last thing we see this morning is it's a willing covenant. A willing covenant. These people said that they would serve the Lord. Are you willing to serve the Lord? Are you willing to serve Him? In verse 23 it says that, it tells us that we must put Christ first. Now therefore put away, said He, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your hearts unto the Lord God of Israel. You've got to put Christ first. You've got to put away all those things that would, would be idols to you or stand in the way of serving Him. We must put away some things that aren't pleasing to Him. We must change some things that aren't pleasing to Him. And we must confess some things because unconfessed sin hinders our relationship with God. Every single day, we make choices. Some of us make a conscious decision every morning when we wake up that we are going to serve the Lord. But I pray that each of us would make that decision that today I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to be faithful. Some people here have never made that commitment. You've never made that commitment. You've never trusted Christ for salvation. You may be saying, I want to serve the Lord. I want to follow Him with all my heart. Do you really mean that? If you do today, we're going to give you an opportunity to make a decision, to follow Him in salvation, to follow Him in service. And remember, it's time to get serious about our commitment to the Lord. Joshua said there in verse 15, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He made a commitment. 
but He also made a covenant. In verse 28, it says, if you see that verse there, it says, He, he told everyone to go on to your inheritance. What does He mean by that? Well, I'll conclude with this. I believe that we will never get our full inheritance until we choose to wholeheartedly follow Jesus Christ. Until we wholeheartedly choose to follow Him and obey, we're not going to get our inheritance. We're not going to get the blessings that He wants to bestow upon us here on this earth. What will you do with Jesus today? Joshua said, as for me and my house, come, come forward for our music. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What about you? I pray that you'll be obedient as we stand and sing this morning. If you have a decision to make for the Lord, that you will follow through and make that decision for Him this morning.